Hey everyone, welcome back. My name's Ryan from the Indie Music Academy, and once again, thank you, Graham, for inviting me back on the channel. I have another great lesson for you today on string orchestration. Last week, we also covered string orchestration, and at the end of that video, I kind of teased that I would show you all of those techniques applied to a modern pop production, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So I'm going to show you a session that I'm currently working on that's a real project uh, that I was hired to do from a website called Sound Better. And in case you haven't heard of Sound Better, it's a platform that's owned by Spotify where artists can connect with producers, mix engineers, mastering engineers, and I am one of the providers on Sound Better. And so this artist reached out to me to do this production for them in a really cool, really fun James Bond type of style. So since this is a paid project, I want to do a really good job. And in case you're wondering, Sound Better is a place where you can build a profile and climb the ranks. And that's actually something that I teach inside the Musical Income course. If you want to do what I do and get paid for your creativity and turn your music into a thriving side income, then I highly encourage you checking out the Musical Income course. The link will be in the description below. Okay, so now let's turn our focus back to the strings. And as I said in the last video, understanding how to orchestrate for strings heavily relies on understanding the section and understanding the instruments that you're gonna be writing for. So if you missed last week's video, I highly recommend you check it out after this one, but I'm gonna dive into some more definitions that hopefully are just gonna open your world to string orchestration. And the first one that I wanna talk about is called glissando. A glissando is when a string player slides continuously from one note to the next. It's a continuous slide from note to note. And it's really similar to another technique called portamento. A portamento is specific to string players because when you slide on a violin, there are actually no notes in between. On a piano, if you did a slide, you would just be hitting all the white keys or all the black keys, right? So you would land on individual notes. But a portamento for strings is actually a continuous pitch bend. There are actual microtonal pitches that are being hit when you slide. So a glissando and portamento are sometimes used interchangeably, but here's the difference. A glissando is where you start on one note and you slide all the way to the second note, much like this. So did you hear how I started on that A and I continuously slid up to the B, right? So I filled that entire gap evenly with a pitch bend. Now string players, when they have a really large leap, like let's say an octave leap, you'll start the slide, but then you will teleport to the next note for lack of a better words. And that sounds kind of like this. You can hear that the string player started the slide, but then we just ended up at the next note. So it wasn't exactly a glissando. And in string orchestration, you actually write them differently on the paper. And depending on the plugin that you use, this is really good to know because there might be two different settings depending if you want to glissando the entire distance between two notes, or if you want to activate a portamento gesture in the playing and making it more romantic. And that's what I have here in front of me. This is a Spitfire Audio virtual instrument, and I'm in their legato patch where portamento, as you can see, is automatically activated if I touch the key very lightly as I just showed you. Pretty cool, pretty expressive, and I'll show you more of this in the musical example I have later for you. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is something called staccato playing. And in the last video, we talked a lot about legato, which is long, smooth playing, and it's probably the most common type of orchestration you'll do for strings. And staccato is the opposite of that. Staccato in Italian literally means detached. And so just as it says, the playing is detached and it's very rhythmic. And the cool thing about some of these virtual instruments nowadays, especially the Spitfire Albion ones, and I don't want this to become a commercial for Spitfire audio necessarily, but I have bought a lot of their stuff because it's awesome. And they have a mode in their plugin that activates this kind of arp arpeggiation ostinato feature where you can play a chord and it'll automatically play a staccato rhythm. Take a listen. Pretty cool. 
Now I want to give you a few more definitions before we dive into the musical examples so that you can have them in mind and so when I press play and talk over the music you'll know exactly what I'm referring to musically when I say these words. So the first is uh, divided versus unison. We have the entire string orchestra with violins, violas, cellos, and double basses and they usually play their own parts but when we just look at the violins and if the violins are playing two different notes that's called a divided part if half the violins are playing one note and the other half are playing another note and creating harmony that's divided where on the other hand if they're all playing the same note that's called unison so switching between divided and unison orchestration is a great way to just pull more out of the section for example if i wrote this melody for the violins and i kept it in unison it would be like this All the violins are playing together, that's normal, right? But you could do this and divide the violins out at some point to create more harmony. So what I did is I split the unison line out into thirds so that the violins would harmonize within their own section. Another common thing you'll see in string orchestration is a notation called 8VA, and it looks just like this. When you see it written, it just means take that line up the octave. So you can either take the entire section up the octave in unison, or you can have violin one up the octave and then violin two playing an octave lower. And you can easily do that by notating 8VA. I do exactly this in the piece I'm about to show you later, so listen for that in a bit. Now I just taught you about unison and divided parts within a section, but now let's talk about the entire string orchestra as a group. Between the basses, the cellos, violas and violins, you can actually have all of those instruments play in unison as well, and that's called homophonic writing. Homophonic writing is when the basses will play a line and the cellos and the violins might double that line in their respective registers. It's a really cool sound, it's extremely powerful because you have the entire string orchestra pushing one melody together. And on the other hand, if you have the different members of the orchestra playing different parts, that's called contrapuntal writing. And that word contrapuntal comes from the word counterpoint, which is defined as individual melodic lines combining together to create harmony. And counterpoint is a whole big thing, especially in 16th century music leading into classical and romantic, but when I talk about counterpoint in today's music, in modern music, we're not really restricted by all of the rules that they set into place back then. It's okay to break the rules of counterpoint in contrapuntal writing today. Basically, just do what sounds good. Last but certainly not least, before we dive into that musical example, I want to talk to you about something called distribution of melodic presentation. This is found a lot, especially in contrapuntal writing, where the different members of the orchestra are playing different things and what this means is that the melody isn't always going to be in the violins for example that might be more common but the distribution of melodic presentation idea when composing and orchestrating is that the melody is going to be shared from section to section so you'll find that the melodic motif is shared with the cellos and they'll play that and it'll bounce around maybe back to the violins and then the basses will have a presentation of the melody. And you'll hear that in the example I'm about to show you towards the end of the piece where there's more movement and more exchange between the members of the orchestra. All right, so now let's jump to the musical example. What I'm gonna do is just hit play in Logic, and I'm going to just talk over the music and describe what I was thinking and what I ended up doing when orchestrating for strings in this pop track. And just as a reminder, this is supposed to be a James Bond style song that's very moody. It would basically be the song that's in the opening credits of a James Bond movie. That was the style that I was hired to write in. And so far, I just have the piano and the strings, there's gonna be guitar, bass, drums, cool synths and stuff like that. But for now, let's focus on the string orchestration. Take a listen. That's the main motif introduced by the piano. So in the beginning, I just used a couple of great Albion patches um, in their legato setting. I actually layered three patches on top of each other to get that very full sound. I just called it 
legato strings. That's what it was right there. Right now I'm just leaving a lot of room for the lead vocal. There's not going to be any drums or guitar or anything that gets in the way of the lead vocal. Here's the chorus. I'm using a lot of those moody, uh, like, spy chords with sixes and stuff like that. It's cool. And here comes our legato strings again. I'm using the modulation wheel to swell up and down dynamically like I talked about last week. There's some 8VA violins right here. I just want to focus in on this section because it's really cool. So I have three instances of my violin patch right here, and I'm going to solo them out so you can hear. Here is the solo violin. Little portamento in there for style and moodiness. And then I divide the section. Up the octave, 8VA. Very nice. That's how you get that sound. All right, I'm going to skip past the second verse and focus up on the string orchestra section over here. So as I play this, listen for all the contrapuntal interactions between the members of the orchestra. And sometimes they'll play a homophonic line where the basses, the cellos, and the violins are all playing together the same melody, and then you'll hear it break apart into different melodic lines that are interacting with each other, creating harmony, and you'll also hear distribution of melodic presentation as the melody bounces around between the basses, the violins, the cellos, and stuff like that. So take a listen. Some staccato strings there in the violas. Here's a homophonic line. Distribution of melody. And here's homophonic. Everyone's playing together. James Bond chord at the end. All right, so I hope you enjoyed listening to that James Bond song that I'm working on. Of course, it's nowhere near finished. I have so much more to add, but this was a great time to really focus in on the strings and to show you how I approach them and how I also leave space for other instruments. So I hope that this was super insightful for you. And when you're working on your own productions, Remember all of those techniques that I taught you in the first half of the video, okay? Because it's so important to get into the mind of a string player to understand the possibilities of that virtual instrument, right? Or the virtual section of instruments. And if you understand how strings work, how the instruments work, and all of the techniques that you can do to create different sounds, then your whole world is gonna get opened up to the possibilities. And of course, it all depends on which virtual instruments you end up buying. Uh, the ones that I use are really cool, really versatile. They have a lot of sounds. But if you don't have one of those, just invite a string player friend in and mic them up and record a layer of live strings over your virtual instruments just to add a cool layer. And you can get to pretty much the same end result by just having your string player friend come over and laying down a little bit of cello or violin. So uh, thanks so much for watching to the end. If you want more from me personally, 
I have another channel on YouTube called the Indie Music Academy. And uh, on that channel, I usually do different types of videos. They're more in the line of music marketing and audience growth and stuff like that. But if you're interested in that, uh, I really want to invite you to check out my channel. Just type in Indie Music Academy into the YouTube search bar, or you can click the link in the description below where I have a free workshop for you on music marketing. So if you're interested in that, the links will be there for you in the description below. And if this video was helpful to you, go ahead and click the thumbs up button. That really helps the channel. And I want to just direct your attention one more time to the musical income course that is out right now. If you want to take your musical creativity and turn that into a thriving online business, then I highly recommend checking out the musical income course, at least to see if it's a good fit for you. So definitely take advantage of that. And thanks so much for watching to the end. I'll see you in a future video on my channel.